ISO 2 certification in Russia? Well, what is ISO 15480 certification? This uh, standard common criteria of assessment of protection of information system and common criteria jargon. It was intended to unify unify format of requirements uh, to function security functions of the hardware and software and the first attempt to unify methodology of certificational tests there's an international uh, common criteria recognition agreement and framework of which uh, we provide a common acceptance of certificates and participants of this uh, agreement uh, consist of two groups first full-scale participants those who have the right to produce their certificates uh, received in the framework of all the CCRA activities and our countries acceptors uh, which uh, don't produce certificates uh, they produce certificates only for their countries uh, but at the same time in unilateral mode they receive certificates of other organizations several times uh, Russia was thought to be participant of the system we were proposed the role of only acceptor and stack of Russia I didn't like that that's why we have on the local system of certification we don't accept other certificates and they don't uh, take our certificates as well formally speaking if you would like to receive an international certificate you can come to the test lab system of certification of any countries uh, participants of this process and uh, the certif you can certify yourself up to the four level of trust produced in this country it will be accepted by all participants of this uh, agreement but there are certain peculiarities uh, Yaldva, you can come without any questions uh, and uh, this application will be accepted. But if you would like to go to the level number three and uh, level of trust and they have requirements to the protection of the environment, uh, uh, development environment, then they have formal requirements which Russian companies are not able to fulfill, uh, such as requirements to compliance to a certain profile of protection, local protection, local protection in the country where the scheme of certification has been done and mass of small peculiarities, including requirements to how the process of development should be organized. Well, good. We have defined that we would like to certify ourselves. We should select a country where we will certify ourselves. <clears throat> and there are several uh, stumbling blocks. The first one, the first indicator is the proximity to the sales market. And for us, the main initiator of certification was our Southern Korean department because notwithstanding the fact that Samsung is a commercial company, they were first ones who said to us that we're ready to by Max Petrol, if you will have certificate ISO uh, 15480, due to the fact that we've been speaking about the Korean market, <coughs> the first company that we came to it was uh, uh, some Korean test labs, but we've also been looking at Spain, Turkey, and a number of other countries. The countries were uh, it makes no sense to go to, for example, most of the uh, means of protection are certified in Canada, Canadian, French labs, they will not even talk to you they just uh, that's what they say and in every country they have their own peculiarity a southern korean laboratory when we came to them uh, they had three meetings with three test laboratories and uh, uh, their eyes uh, became wide open when they hear that this is a russian company and they start saying they don't say no they don't say no they say well we don't have english speaking uh, specialists and we cannot take do the assessment of invitation which is not written in Korean language some say that they are too overloaded with projects and they are not ready to undertake it and from the conversation you can see that they don't have any desire to deal with Russian company once again in a number of countries like Italy for example they say that well we're ready to certify you, but if your product will comply to certain local regulations. And we understand their fears, because a certificate for compliance to the second level of trust gives the right to sell certified programs to the bodies of authority. If you think that in Italy they don't have paranoics like our bodies of authority, you are greatly mistaken. Well, the whole first year 
of it was communications with the uh, test labs uh, we have stopped on psi and once again the first meeting with psi was a uh, joint analogy of stack the first meeting with them was that yes no formal uh, uh, blocks uh, to accept your application but as a result it took approximately a year to make the decision and not only the federal in industry but the Institute of Foreign Affairs also participated in this decision and federal police because it's their knowledge of our federal security service so before we got approval of all those organizations between these three organizations they didn't accept our application after the application was officially accepted <coughs> And the work actually was started. Then we faced the first difference between German scheme of certification from Russian one. It's a very strict organization of work. Uh, if you apply here in Russia, you apply to Stack. Stack have looked at the application. Then you start certification, and then afterwards uh, communication with federal authorities. You should forget about that. It's the problem of the test labs and the certification bodies. But in Germany, it's different. In Germany, you have applied. It has been approved. Test lab starts working. And the first thing they do, you agree the calendar of operations, not only with the test lab, but also with the federal agency. Because for each application like that, federal agency separates their own expert, which assesses all stages of the assessment. And due to that they are very uh, peculiar people and it's a crisis budget is being cut specialists are being laid off so specialist has a lot of projects so they count the time in time slots two weeks per document therefore if you are not able to give document for expertise in this uh, two week time slot well you have to wait for the next time slot in order to look at your document in Russia you will never be you will never be able to see something like that so what do you need for the second assessment round in order to receive the certificate for the second uh, level of trust? Well, the assessment level of trust number two is the minimum level uh, under which uh, the uh, test lab knows something about the internals of the product. The most important thing, the most important document that you have to provide is the security documents which describe requirements and brief description of how you provide the protection in this certified product. Also, small top level project documentation, functional specifications, and uh, something that can be translated as project, but they call it design of product or architecture. It's a testing documentation and a standard user manual also, which is nothing special. The security target requirements to it are not different uh, from Russian to English ones, uh, to foreign ones, but there are certain peculiarities. In Russia, if you certify a product, for example, for the compliance of technical specifications, and uh, I'm not going to show these technical specifications to the clients because they are defined to pass this education and not to demonstrate functions of security of the product. In a framework of CCLRI, it's all totally different. You have to show to the client not only a certificate, but also the security target and report of certifications. That's why, well, the procedure of certification is needed so that client not only would be confident that somebody have tested their, their software, but also made sure what was the main idea of this test and what it was tested for. After the completion of the procedure of certification, the objective and security target and reports on certification are being published in two places. The the first one, commonqtiportal.org, which is a central portal of all these international system of certification. Plus, in a number of countries like Germany, these same documents are being published in the site of federal body, which was done the certification. It gives me a certain simplicity to the work for those who prepares the work for certification because the uh, objective uh, target should not be. But on, on the portal, you have to select security target for similar products. You look at which one of them is closer to your product, and then you have to change, modify the requirements, and change the department with the uh, functions of the security of the product. Yes, of course, there are peculiarities. For example, the German test lab uh, criticizes. Uh, uh, those which are written by the Canadian labs, uh, Canadian manufacturers, and assessed by the Canadian lab because they said, well, it does not comply to the common criteria. And they point by their fingers and it does not comply, truly. 
for example, there are differences on how people assess uh, the assessment of dependencies, uh, some things which a normal developer don't really understand. And I've been working in Russian system of certification course of five years, including the assessment of ISO 15480. And I don't know all these peculiarities even today because it's very unusual for the IT guy to dig into such things. Well, the first thing that uh, you're being required when you come to provide the project documentation for the product is a scheme of dividing this product into subsystems and a detailed description of the interface of cooperation between those systems. Well, briefly, I'm going to tell you what is that. Basically speaking, developers should tell them, well, look, my product consists of these modules, plus it has an operating system and a database operating system, and database don't touch it because uh, we are not certifying them, but we certified these pieces of my product. The first thing that you will face here is the fact that the ideology of the account criteria assumes that uh, with the development, uh, well, development was uh, done formally. First, you have designed from which subsystems your system will consist of. Then you have designed how the subsystem is divided into modules. Then you formally divided how modules will cooperate with one with another. And then developers started developing all of it. Well, it's understandable to everyone that in reality, it never happens like that because the product that has been developed in the course of 10 and more years, it's a constant iteration process and the idea that you had in the beginning it doesn't work right now and right now everything is being changed right now so the first thing that you do is that you sit behind the table you look at your product and then you say well let's call this subsystem of reporting and this let's call subsystem of scanning and this will be called the database of knowledge describe it by schemes show it uh, informational exchange between the systems and uh, give it to, for certification and then pray that this will be accepted and nobody will ask you more detailed questions about how does this look in reality well what is required from the point of view of project documentation formally in the specification, you can include any requirements to the security. You can take them from the second part of the common criteria. It's a catalog of re requirements with certain rules which allow you to change and modify those requirements. Plus, you, in a compliance with certain principles, you can formulate uh, open requirements to the product. But there is a certain set of requirements which you have to include into the product, even though formally there is no such requirement, but they will make you do that. The most important thing which should be available there, you should justify that uh, the set of requirements that you have provided to them, if these requirements have been fulfilled, then protection of the product cannot be avoided. And when you speak about unavailability of the means of protection, they look at certain limited uh, set of attacks, attacks related with uh, force, brute force, uh, brute force, facing protocols, etc., etc. And this is also complexity of the mechanisms of dividing the authority. So it would be impossible to violate access rights or get around certain uh, access rights, uh, checks, and absence of errors of the buffer overflow, uh, whose usage would be give the possibility to discover the logic of the program operation. And when you read the general assessment methodology and you see smart words about how everything should be operated and uh, well described, in the documentation, it looks awful. You understand that you have to write a lot of papers with a model of violators, model of threats. But in given the project documentation, it was written by the consulting company because we ourselves wouldn't be able to do it for the first time. But in reality, each of these justifications takes half a page of writing. Hey, guys, look, there is no ways around it. If you have properly built the role policy, so the violator will have no possibility to get around it and do any critical operation. It's not as awful as it might seem. If you have done this certification once, then you'll be able and you can use these documents as templates uh, for writing a project documentation for other products. Functional specification is the worst document that we ever faced, and its development took us six months out of those 11 months that we've been involved in this project on certification of the product. So what is to be actually done? It's a digitalization of the architecture down to the level of interface description. While, for example, we have interface of cooperation between uh, scanning uh, Max uh, kernel and database of knowledge. In order to certify the interface, one needs to 
one needs to provide detailed description in which protocol you communicate the scanning uh, kernel with database and launch. What is the access uh, objects? Who is the subjects of these access rights? Which operations are being done? Which rules of distribution of the access rights are being uh, followed? Everything uh, should be described in very great detail. And if well, it's good if you use standard protocols, then you can easily give assessments to the documents which describe these protocols, RFC or uh, documentation for the developer of this program module. If you realize your own protocol, this protocol has to be specified by you. You have to write your own specification which describes all of this. We were lucky and we have not been inventing those protocols we have used already predefined ones. The level of digitalization is really high one. Or the single interface is the interface of communication with the operating system. Well, just a second. A stumbling block that we often face is the procedure of identification and authentication when these procedures are being written separately. But we were lucky we have been using the procedure of authentication realized in the operating system. Uh, how usually uh, the authentication looks in the software product user enters password from this password the hashtag has been calculated the hash has been compared to hash which has been stored in a database as soon as the test lab hears the word hash the first question they ask you what about cryptography which one you, do you use if you use cryptography over the operating system well it's normal if you write a hashing function yourself. Well, same way like in Russia, you face the requirement that your hashing function should comply to the internal standards they have. In Germany, it's FIP 140. Basically speaking, just due to the fact that you have used your own hashing function, in addition to ISO 15, uh, the ATA certification, you also should certify your cryptographic module. And cert certification of cryptographic module in Germany is not less complex than certification in uh, uh, FSB in Russia. So in our case, we had to go through all our problems in order to find out so that we don't write our own hashing function and we have used only operating system functions. Well, the level of digitalization is a very high one, and uh, in project documentation we face the fact that it's insufficient just to describe that you have this interface. In the ISO 1548, uh, you have very deep uh, classification of the inter interfaces. Interface class A1 has these. It's an interface which has these properties and this size A2 interface and the project depends and I don't know what is the difference between them and all the work was done for us by the consulting company and I do hope that in the future we will just follow the similar uh, pathway because uh, products are built on a similar architecture well therefore in order to be assessed and the product be certified you have to describe in a great detail the mechanism of controlling access access in your product and there are stumbling blocks that you have to overcome as well as i've told you in the project documentation you have to justify impossibility of getting around the mechanism of security one of the directions of getting around it is the uh, access limitation function uh, it didn't say properly anywhere, but there's a requirement which is followed by all schemes of certification that I have faced. Hey guys, please write good role model. You have the set of roles and operations which uh, can be executed over the access objects and uh, basically speaking, the mechanisms of uh, principle of giving those roles to the users. Well, uh, we understand this set of rules and in operations we can see, for example, that uh, bad roles combinations uh, well for example the role of creating in the payment applications are uh, creating uh, of a payment and approval of uh, payment uh, these roles are not applicable and applying them to other levels uh, of uh, separating the access well it might be applicable and test labs they can work with role model if in your product you have discrimination model when the user can uh, be the user when creating the object he can use the uh, 
any set of rules, but for other models, there is no ready models of assessment, is it a proper or improper distribution of rules. So you have to adjust your system of rules. You show to the test uh, lab and say, hey, guys, no, it doesn't work this way. Do this, this, and this. Define that you, for example, have this set of rules, and this is the role of operator. And this set of rules, it's the role of, let's say, analytics, who looks at the reports. And define, please, which rights should comply to which roles and include it in to the user documentation and then you will think that this limitation for usage of your product irrespectively to having discrimination policy of access rights where you can do whatever you want to do the company which uses certified product will be obliged to follow these settings and requirements and uh, not being able of making step to the right step to the right to the left and with following these conditions test lab is ready to do the assessment and the certification will agree with this assessment well, after all this has been described on the level of the interface, then you write the next document, some more detailed uh, description of realization, project of the top level, or specification of design. Well, we also have to post in test lab all the internals of the product, database schemes, or the same protocol specifications uh, that I was speaking about interface description down to the API function description. Why do we need it? Well, first of all, so that the test lab would be able to uh, be sure that everything that is being defined in the product is being fulfilled. Then there's another directions in activity of certification is independent uh, search of vulnerability in the software products, which has to be done by the test lab. So the scheme of databases and APIs and specifications of protocols is needed so that the first phasing of protocols is being done in the black boss mode in order to understand which parameters where the buffer overflow happens and etc. etc. So all these has to be uh, described and shown to the management of test lab. Therefore, if you use some open source products, you have to give a documentation for these products. Well, what documentation you have, that's what you have. This could be a URL link to the site of developer where they describe the header function of the products. This could be manuals, this could be anything else, but information should be available, of course. Well, if software module was written by you, then you'll have to write the specification alone because uh, there is not where else where you can take this uh, information because it's another stumbling block because which library can be written 10 years ago and developer who was writing 10 years ago uh, but he was he left the company you have to reverse this library and uh, in a reverse cycle you have to write the header uh, file and include it into the documentation Difficult, long time, but you have to do it. Uh, there is a trick which is recommended by the test labs itself. Hey, guys, if you don't know how this library was built, tell us that this is not part of your product. It's the object of environment. It doesn't matter that it's a part of your product. Nobody cares about it. So the uh, board of assessment is uh, built uh, in a part of the product. Well, we play here and we don't play here because this is not assessment. And this is a legal trick. It is defined by ISO 15480 and everybody agrees to it due to the absence of other options. <clears throat> so the level of digitalization is really high one insufficiently just to describe what calls these functions but you have to describe the diagram of sequence uh, how these operations are being executed whose requirements have been announced uh, in the objective and security all the way to the sequential call of the function and which data between these calls is being transferred fortunately this is to be done only for those fun functions for example if we have a requirement uh, to authentication well, only for those fun functions which uh, are called uh, during the check of the password and user. Top management. Fortunately to us, so we had very good top management. And we need three things, actually. Uh, the user manual, description of the interface and all the operations which are related to usage of the security function of the product. And this can be book or PDF document, or it can be UR, URL file in built into the program. Both of them are accepted. The second one is the installation manual. Well, let me formulate it. 
for the most of the uh, software products you can install it with a certain set of options and these options you can play with but when certified product has been installed you should have a guarantee and you will uh, need all the instructions which are needed for the correct functioning of the uh, certified uh, objective therefore in addition to the fact that you have an installation manual you need additional document uh, to the manual hey guys you should know if you use certified version then you have to put this option this uh, uh, or this way you have to disable this module or add additional software or to do additional preset in the configuration file that's why uh, when we do the certification uh, all these settings are being uh, reproduced and you know variants like oh we forgot to switch something on it doesn't work anymore The settings are well fixed. Plus, the third thing which is required for me is to describe the procedure of delivering the product to the client in such a way that, so to the client uh, you would have a delivery of the product and the manual for this product. <clears throat> and your client should be convinced in the usability of this product for example he should check that he received the necessary version of distributive and the control hashtags and ID numbers that were given and shown in the interface and the same thing is related to the top management the, it's assumed that the client receives an archive which has been included uh, installator includes into it, and that's his a control of some uh, user manual here's the control some special settings after installation here's the control <laughs> hash uh, some it's described as a document and then it's been included into the documentation for the test lab the most unexpected thing that we have faced ourselves is the representation of the testing documentation presenting it to the management the second assessment level of trust is different from the first le trust level is that the developer should provide lab with the full set of tests which are done uh, according to their testing of the release and the uh, testing lab does the selective uh, check what is uh, so unseemly to it well we have good testing ourselves and we have well for each function you have uh, dozens and hundreds of tests some of them done automatically some of them are done manually but the test documentation is done in Russian language for example and to translate all of this all this tree of tests to English it's a very well it's not difficult money wise but it's a uh, from the point of view of uh, time it's not acceptable so when we came to the lab what should we do in this case they looked at us they looked at our uh, testing uh, logbook and they said well we do need full testing documentation for you but not so full not so full detail wise so as a result as a result of the output we follow the same way like uh, Russian test labs are doing we have written not a fake but uh, certain programs and methodology of tests uh, demonstrate uh, workability of other interface accessible to the internet uh, in we do testing and we have uh, described the tests and details we don't toss it like that uh, every function has been tested uh, by 10 different tests but as a result uh, when we put to, to the laboratory the document that was sent they said well you see the password out of four digits and user has entered authentication works tests for buffer overflow already are not being provided by us even though this testing will also do and the depth of digitalization of test documentation is required uh, on a step-by-step -step basis you have put check mark here you have introduced text here you have pressed this button here and other output you should see this picture pay attention in red color this is the information that tester should see in order to achieve a good test passing analysis vulnerabilities what is done by the test lab it's for the second assessment level it's a testing by the black box method test lab has no source codes they are provided only by the fourth level of assessment they receive the product which they can turn and can do whatever he wants with this product whatever he can and by the way Russian or Western test labs none of them will declare uh, what really 
how really they discover vulnerabilities in uh, certified programs. But those who know our company, you know that uh, our analysis of protection is our key uh, function, and our products are also being analyzed by us. And both with the use of uh, our hands, hands of hackers, and with the help of our own analysis of protection projects. But uh, at, at this moment of time, we did have a certain problem. What if Germans do have some sort of knowledge that we have missed? If they will, uh, we had a zero day vulnerability and then we'll not be able to restore. Our reputation will be destroyed from the beginning. But we were able to see how the testing is being done. Our beta tester said, Foo! Because everything they've been doing, it's uh, phasing of a black box uh, mod protocol, and they were not able to discover some of these protocols. But they could be able to see that upon the relations between functions, that a certain parameter is being transferred. Let's put it uh, in uh, uh, special numbers, and then we'll see what really happens with those variables. And then we we'll do a search of well known vulnerabilities. Uh, just uh, look at the CVE database of whether. Uh, whether the software module that was being used by us, uh, well, we did have small problem. By that release, we have fixed the problem. Those who have installed Max Patrol and was checking car machine with the Max Patrol in the composition of the Patrol, they've seen open a cell library. It had some vulnerability. And we're not able to deny this library because it's used for scanning of certain ancient hardwares. So we have to use vulnerable version. But fortunately to us, uh, realization of this function in the library was not used, we have not included it into delivery. But this program also exists, and sometimes the level user they have to use libraries with well known uh, vulnerabilities. Well, that's it. Out of everything that I've told you, told you previously, and what we have learned about the analysis of vulnerabilities, they do approximately 30% out of what we do with our analysis of uh, penetration tests. The result of certification is a report of certification. In principle, the process looks the following way. You have transferred documents to the test lab. Test lab for this document has made a report. The next document, assessment report. Each assessment report is being tested by certification by the authority. And uh, why a BSI expert writes this 50 to 60 page document report and certification. Like we've been checking these uh, software, the check is such, limitations were such and such, result positive. Otherwise, there won't be no report on certification, and the report on certification becomes an integral part of certified product. Well, given the certified uh, version of the product, you have to give in the certificate, uh, security note, and report on certification. I don't know how other certification schemes are working, but right now we're working with the Spanish scheme, but right now we have not received the certification. But in German scheme of certification, as soon as you passed all these steps, you also have the chance to receive the certificate, and they are not going to give it to you before you will take certain obligations. It's the same obligation to provide a client with full set of certified documents. So BSI roughly uh, is carefully looking at... Uh, uh, the fact that a trademark of John PSI wouldn't be used for bad marketing. In other words, they want to make sure that the purchaser of this product has all the information about the security function and its realization. And in the security order, there's a very great description of all the limitations, of all the threats from which it consists. Uh, description of... Uh, limitations that they have to face. The fact is that sometimes with certification for RISA 408, well, you use a product which client-server relations is done through the HTTP open protocol and due to certain ideas you cannot use encoding so that you wouldn't lose. For example, you cannot use SSL so you don't go through certification of uh, cryptographic modules. So what the bad developer does. He said the following. He said, let's use HTTP. Then we will write in documentation that the product can be used only in isolated network, no remote access. It's defined in security call. Then certification is done. Certificate is given with this limitation. Then they sell product. And a security document 
uh, and the client doesn't know about this limitation. He looks at the product, tests it in real conditions, and then authentication data are passed through the open protocol through the internet. In order for this not to happen, BSI requires so that all documentation security uh, report, certification report, which describes of it. all this documentation has to be provided to the uh, uh, client, uh, published on the site of developer, and it has to be transferred and described in the manual on delivery of the product. If you will try to hide and remove from the site these documents, this is a formal uh, certificate recall uh, reason. Uh, well, making the resume out of uh, above said, what is the main difference of the Western certification schemes from Russian one? Well, practically, there is no difference. Pre we didn't see principal difference except for some peculiarities that I've been telling you about. Uh, I, we've liked the approach, and uh, it's a Russian uh, approach. Well, iteration. What is this iteration is all about? We have written the project documentation, then we give it to the assessment, and then uh, Document is bad, does not, not complete the requirements. It was uh, returned to us with uh, uh, notes, then we send the next version, then it will be assessed, then we'll find other problems, and this process will be iterated until we will bring this document to the ideal condition. So there is no situation that, uh, oh, your document does not comply, goodbye. No, they don't do it. And communications with them, you communicate with the test lab and more and with certification bodies as well and this communication is that well you can write a letter through the email and they will answer you but the openness for communication i really like that because uh, some questions uh, they had to be solved directly and organizationally for example i will stop on this we've liked the requirements to the depth of digitalization because in russian certification you can submit project documentation in more general sense, less detailed. But I liked uh, the deadlines uh, and cost. The deadlines, one year for certification, one year for decision making, it's too much. The cost of certification well, three times higher than similar certification in Russia. If you, well, we didn't like, like in Russian one, we know that it's an avoidable defixation of versions. For example, we have uh, submitted for one O version, and if we're well, lucky, this will be running one more year, and the body of certification has given the certification. The previous version has already been outdated, but the client has to be used, uh, has to use old version, or uh, he bought certified version, but uh, legally or illegally he used the real one. And then also, we didn't like the work of Post of Russia. The certificate was produced 30th of April, and by now I have not received it on paper. Coming back to the openness of certification, well, this is a real problem right now. Document has not been received, but it was given. Well, the problem was solved very quickly. I've been writing a letter to the uh, body of certification. I say, what can be done? I say, well, this morning, Friday, it was sent, and today, finally, I see the electronic version of certificate and electronic version of document with all the necessary signatures and stuff. And I hope that the Russian certification scheme, similar system, will be applied as well. Well, that's all I wanted to tell you. If any questions. I'll answer them outside of this room.